Some of these you may have heard of, some of them you might not have heard of. I implore you to check all of them out, but these are the ones that are so near and dear to my heart. And after I finished reading them, I never stopped thinking about them. So let's get into it. Number one, we have The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams. And this is also in no particular order, but this is just the first one that I'm mentioning. This follows a woman named Brie and she works for a lifestyle website. Now, she gets a project where she's supposed to be experimenting with this new body positive fitness app. And you have her downloading the app, using it. And on the other side of that, you have the CEO of this company named Wes. He is a personal trainer. He loves working with people. He loves exercising. He's just kind of bored of the paperwork side of business. So he decides to secretly get back into training. And we honestly just see everything that that entails. Um, I really enjoy this story. You just want like a feel good romance. I mean, there's a bit of drama in it as always. I feel like you can't not have drama in a romance book, but I really enjoy this one. And we're just gonna move swiftly on to the next book by this author that I really enjoyed, which is How to Fail at Flirting. In this one, we follow Naya. She is a professor and the department in her university is falling apart. I think they're laying off people. So her friends are like, you know what? Let's go out. Let's just have a good time. Like, we'll, we'll think about this stuff on Monday. She goes to this bar and she meets this guy. Literally how every other story starts. But she meets Jake and he's here on business. I think he's there for like a couple days in the city. And I feel like they hit it off. I mean, the, the conversation that they first have <laughs> when they meet, I think is just so hilarious, but they get to talking, they drink, somebody might go back to somebody else's place, who knows? But I really enjoyed their relationship. She's definitely becoming an author that I really enjoy reading from. Next, we have The Kiss Quotient. Y'all have heard of this. <laughs> like, and if you have not heard of this, you must be new to like the internet book community. But Stella has not had the best of luck with relationships. Newsflash! It's the men, not her. She wants to get better at relationships and sex, I guess. So she hires this escort and that's where Michael comes in. He meets her and he's just like, you? You want an escort? This is, I don't know how I feel about this. He goes along with it. He's getting paid. He does his job. Maybe somebody catches feelings. Maybe someone confesses. This is one of the first adult romance books that I read. And I have never read a man so observant and so in tune with another human being. It was literally the best thing that I have ever encountered in a book. So, I mean, like, you know Helen Huang. You have seen her everywhere. I'm low-key waiting for her to publish more books. I do not know where she has been, but Miss Helen Huang, please. <laughs> if you, I don't know, you're probably never gonna watch this video, but I am very excited for what you have in store, if you have anything. If not, that's perfectly fine. But I, I don't know, I really enjoy these books and it does have a lot of smut in it. Please beware if you are someone that's like, I don't really like reading a lot of very explicit sex scenes. This one might not be for you. Take a pass on this one. Try some other ones out in this list. You'll probably like them a little bit better. After that, we have Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Let me preface, last 20%. Mm -mm -mm. No, uh, I had problems with this book, but I think overall this was literally, this should be the standard for romance books. I, I say it every single time, but I don't know what it is. Abby Jimenez just writes really lovable characters and characters that have chemistry. Now I complained about this a couple videos ago, how I, I don't like these books where, you know, I understand insta lust. That's something that like uh, all humans experience. Insta love, I'm kind of just like, no, I can't really get with that. But we follow Brie, who is a physician, and her brother is suffering from kidney failure. So she's having to take care of her brother. And she's been working at this hospital for about 10 years. She wants to get a promotion. She wants to be like head of the department. In comes Dr. Jacob Maddox. And think of like the worst first impression that you could ever have. That was this man in this book. Uh, the first impression was not good at all. The first meeting was atrocious, a train wreck, all of the above. Um, so he spends most of the book kind of trying to make up for that first meeting. But oh my god, his family is also a mess. A lot of these books have very messy families in them. <laughs> but I think that like, it adds to the depth of the book. Okay, he finds out that his ex girlfriend is marrying his younger brother. And everyone is in a spiral about it. They're like, Oh my god, Jacob, are you okay? Are you all right? And he's like, I'm perfectly fine. Like, I'm actually chilling. But is he chilling? 
read and find out. This is a character that suffers from very severe anxiety, I believe. So that was definitely something I, I had never really read in a book that I quite enjoyed. And I just love this. Like, one of the only books that I actually stayed up to read. Go check it out. Uh, Party Your World by Abby Jimenez is also a really good one. I read Life's Too Short. I thought that one was okay, but the rest of her books I'm not gonna give a try. I have not heard the best things about it, so I think I'm just gonna continue on with her newer releases. After that, we have The Neighbor Favor by Christina Forrest. This is one that is about book people. So if you like anything having to do with the publishing industry, any books about authors, this is the book for you. But we have this girl who works in the publishing industry and she wants to work in the children's publishing sector. So she's not where she wants to be in terms of her career. She ends up reaching out to her favorite fantasy author and he responds. So we have months and months of them corresponding, sending emails back and forth. And Nick is an author that wrote a very, I would say pretty popular fantasy book, but he hasn't written a sequel. So he's kind of just been traveling. Who knows? Has he been working on it? You got to check the book out to, to find out if he does. But I had a couple issues with this. I don't like miscommunication. This is like heavy on the miscommunication, okay? Miscommunication is the bane of my existence. But at this point, I just think I'm not going to avoid it when it comes to romance because there's just always some sort of miscommunication. And this, it, it's, it's really prevalent in this book. But overall, I really enjoyed this one. I think uh, if you're looking for more books, cute, cozy books that don't have that much spice i don't think there's a lot of spice in this definitely check out the neighbor favor now all the emily henry haters come to the front <laughs> no i i do enjoy emily henry recent release happy place was not my favorite honestly my least favorite by her but this is another book that has to deal with book people Laura is a literary agent and she gets shit done she knows her clients like she knows how to do her job and do her job well so at the beginning of this book she's in a relationship I can't remember the reason why that relationship fell through but it was something silly so that kind of just gets broken up with before this meeting with Charlie who I believe is another literary agent and another first encounter that just goes so wrong <laughs> and you kind of are like damn like girl you're not having the best day but they run into each other a couple years down the line. It's definitely one by Emily Henry that I enjoyed and the more that I think about it it's like becoming my favorite by her. You know when you love her and that is Tia Williams. <laughs> so I, I will talk about this first book. This one I believe it came out two or three years ago. You follow Ava and Shane. Now Ava is a erotica writer. I believe she has chronic migraines. You find out that 15 years ago she had a run-in with this man and it was honestly the, the craziest of weeks. Like those seven days were honestly the craziest seven days that a human being could have. So she's been thinking about it for so long and uh, you have Shane who battling alcoholism. He may or may not be recently sober but he's going through a lot. <laughs> He's also uh, an author as well, but we see them maybe rekindle a love that was lost. And I think I, I quite love this story because, I mean, when they first meet each other, they're like 15 or 16 or maybe even 17. And I mean, 15 years is a lot of time, like a lot of stuff. Happen I mean, she has a kid right now and um, there's just so much that can happen in 15 years that I first kind of hesitate to be like, oh, like, how is this gonna work so much time has passed but I think that's what made the story so beautiful and I do say this is a love story as opposed to a romance because there is romance in it but when I tell you there's like so there's like so much other stuff that goes in there like th there's there's a lot there's a lot that happens in this book but I think this is definitely one that if you want to try definitely try but if you're not feeling this I have another one for you and that is a love song for Ricky Wilde. This came out last month, but <sighs> might be slightly more enjoyable for me than Seven Days in June. I think the fusion of like the Harlem Renaissance and all that history in this book is the selling point. It is the highlight. It is the best part <laughs> of this book. Like. When I tell you I loved reading about historic black people and we follow two timelines. Uh, we have Ricky in 2024. She is a part of this really prominent black family. Her older sisters are like really, you know, popular socialites in the city of Atlanta. Her family owns a lot of funeral homes. So each of her sisters owns one of the funeral homes. She wants more for her life. She doesn't see herself 
staying in this business. Her love lies with flowers. She wants to be a florist. She wants to open her own flower shop. So we follow her in present day 2024 and then we follow Ezra in 1924. Now he is a pianist, a musician. He had a very tough upbringing. I mean there's a lot of stuff that he goes through before he moves to New York but essentially he is just trying to make a name for himself and truly really loved every part of this book. There's not one thing I hated like I finished the book and I had to give it five stars because I could not think of a single thing that I didn't like in the book and even towards like the middle to end of it gets so wacky but you're just like I'm already along for the ride am I really hating it like no you're you're, you're loving it you're already in it like honestly for me it gets better and better <laughs> because this was so surprisingly funny and oh, so many beautiful just like so many amazing scenes between these characters and the showstopper at least for me was Miss Della. I, I have never read a character and been like, oh no, she's my favorite. Like whenever I read books, I'm just like, oh my God, I love everybody. I can't choose. This, in this book, Miss Della takes the cake for me as my favorite character. I don't know what it is about this woman. I loved every single part of her and this was just a, such a good story. So like It's Seven Days in June was not for you. If you did not like it, if you're like, oh, I wanted something more, definitely try this. Like I think they're two very different books. It's just so cute. It was just so cool. So read it, read it, okay? Read this book and love it. <laughs> the one, the only, Kennedy Ryan. Whenever I do anything relating to romance, Kennedy Ryan will come up. I'm, I'm letting y'all know now. She will come up, I will be mentioning her and I will be talking about before I let go. But in this case, we have Real. This follows a Broadway actor who's an understudy as well as a director. Now this, oh, I just realized this also has like, Harlem Renaissance vibes. You love that time period. This is yet another book for you to check out but Cannon is a director and he's trying to find his next leading lady. He wants to do a biopic on a black historic character during the Renaissance time. Her name was Zessie Blue and who was gonna play this character? Who was gonna bring her to life? Wonderful love story. One by Kennedy Ryan that I don't know if people really talk about very often because before I let go I feel it's her most popular release but this arrivals before I let go. Y'all know how much I love before I let go. So the last two books. This is in a series we have before I let go and this could be us. This is the first book in the series follows Yasmin and Josiah. They have been co-parenting their two kids and running a business and we see both of them kind of maybe getting back together like I, I can't really say but this I, I like I will never stop talking about Kennedy Ryan. The second book came out in early March and this follows Soledad. I know I've said messy so many times in this video but only so much mess that I'm willing to tolerate and put up with and, and honestly read about and I think this is my limit. This is my threshold because she has one of the most oh like I had the displeasure of reading about this man but Edward is just he makes me want to strangle someone like literally he wants he makes me want to commit violent acts and at the beginning of this book they are going to a Christmas party for a company that he works for so it starts and you're just like oh like I knew this man was an asshole like I knew it from the jump that this man was going to be so fucking irritating but at this Christmas party we meet Josiah now Josiah and his ex-wife Jermaine have two autistic boys co-parenting these two beautiful boys Adam and Aaron but we just see a romance maybe emerge like I don't know please read it oh um, this is just a wonderful book that if you want to get into Kenny New Ryan like look at these covers okay that should be enough for you to want to buy this book the covers are just so beautiful but those are all the romance books that I have read adult romance books thank you guys for watching um let me know if you've read any of these books I will see you in the next one